Yeah, well, I think the players are working really hard, you know, this week to um, take advantage of some of the lessons that we learned in the first game, uh, try to get prepared for, you know, a very, very talented Texas A&M team. Um, they've got a lot of starters back. They've got a lot of experience. Um, got a lot of good players at key positions, whether it's quarterback, running back, lots of good defensive players. Uh, we've had some tough games with these guys in the past, and uh, certainly need to elevate our game uh, to maintain sort of the intensity and the standard uh, of excellence that we want to play with for 60 minutes in a game. Uh, and I think everybody's got to challenge, you know, themselves to do that. Um, you know, Kevin Elko, you know, talks to the team, and I think he made a good point. Um, you know, you can always ask yourself, what if? Uh, you ask yourself, what if I play with discipline? What if I dominate the guy? What if I play hard for 60 minutes? What if I maintain intensity? Those are all questions that you ask yourself before something happens. All right, and then you can say only if, and that's what you ask yourself after it happens. You know, only if I'd have done this, only if I'd have prepared better, only if I'd have played for 60 minutes. So uh, I think those are all things that, uh, lessons that we're trying to get our players to, you know, understand that you got to pay the price for success up front. Uh, and uh, it's important that they prepare well and um, they certainly have great respect for the team that they play uh, and what they have to do to have the best chance to have success against them. You know, this, this um, week is College Football Mental Health Week. Um, you know, we're proud to be a part of the Helensky Hope for uh, three and the third, um, something that we supported last year when we played at South Carolina. Um, I've also been involved for probably 20 years with the Jason Foundation, which is all about suicide awareness in teens. Uh, so we think this is a very important cause to create awareness on a national basis so uh, a lot of people can ver be very, very supportive. You know, we're also taking part in the, you know, first and gold awareness uh, to fight cancer, uh, children's cancer research and curing cancer for young people. I think they've raised like $17.5 million over the years, and uh, we're very pleased and happy to be a part of, you know, that um, as well. So, um, you know, with that, we're looking forward to playing in Bryant-Denny Stadium this week. Um, I know it won't be the same without all the fans, but we know you'll be there in spirit, and I hope the fans that are there will do a great job of, you know, helping our team and cheering our t team along so that they can maintain the emotional standard that they need to be able to play well for 60 minutes. Okay, we'll start things with Michael Casagrande. I want to ask you about uh, Charles Kelly and Christian Barmer, or either one of them uh, will both or either be available uh, at the game Saturday? Yeah, Charles Kelly was back to work today, so um, he's fine. Uh, Christian Barmore has practiced all week, uh, so that we're, we're hopeful that he'll be able to contribute in the game as well. Brett Hudson? Uh, hey, Coach, I'm curious what has impressed you about Texas A&M's run defense, both over – the entirety of Jimbo's time there, but especially last week, generating 10 tackles for a loss against Mandy. Well, you know, they got very talented guys. They have really good, big, up-front guys that are athletic, can move, can get off blocks and run. Their linebackers can really, really run. Their secondary is really, really aggressive, especially their safeties. Their corners can cover very well. You know, they got a talented team. They've got a good scheme. They've got a good defensive coordinator who does a great job, I think, scheme-wise. Um, now these guys have been in this system for a few years. Um, you know, they're, they, they, they make a lot of plays. They're talented and they make a lot of plays. So uh, it's going to be a real challenge for us to minimize those negative plays. And uh, I think we need to be able to run the football against these guys. I think you always do if you're going to have the kind of balance you need to be successful on offense. We'll go with Charlie Potter now. Hey, Coach, you uh, mentioned being back at Bryant-Denny. I just wondered what your thoughts are on the, the renovations that were done, especially the locker room and that tunnel you guys walked through. Well, I think it's fantastic. You know, I think the, all the improvements made in the stadium, the boxes, the, um, the locker room, uh, the tunnel, the entrance, um, I really do think it's um, absolutely first class and as, as nice a facility uh, and stadium to play in as, you know, anybody's in the country. So, uh, and we're glad to have that. We're glad to have an administration who is supportive of trying to provide those kind of facilities. And I know our players certainly appreciate having the opportunity to compete 
you know, in that kind of arena. Um, so it's, it's, it's first class in every way. And we're happy for the people who, you know, have been very, very supportive of the university and the athletic program to have, you know, some of the finest um, boxes and facilities in the country as well. Okay, we'll go to Aaron Suttles now. I think I was wondering, what does LeBron Ray bring to the defense when he's healthy? And how, how difficult was the foot injury that he had to come back from that? Well, I think it was very difficult because it was an ongoing injury, but he worked really, really hard. And, um, you know, he's a really good player. Um, we're a different team if he can't play because uh, he's athletic, he can run, he's a decent pass rusher. Um, he's a guy that can do – he can play the run, he can play the point, but he's still athletic enough to play on the edge and give you some push, and he's a good inside rusher. So um, we need more guys like LeBron Ray, you know, on our team. Uh, he's got great character, competitive character. Uh, really, he's a hard worker, sets a good example for other players. So, you know, when he's around, uh, his presence is certainly uh, felt by everybody else and certainly appreciated by us as coaches. Go to Mike Rodak. You had a few new starters in the secondary for this game between Malachi, uh, Daniel Wright, and then Josh Job. Just what did you see out of them, and, and how well they fit in to the existing pieces that you have on the, on the defense? Well, we actually had four new starters. You know, Jordan Battle played a little bit in dime last year, but, um, you know, they did good things. I, I'm sure that um, there are guys that I think um, can develop very nicely into very, being very good players. Um, some things we need to clean up, uh, tackling. Uh, in some areas, wasn't as good as it needed to be at the second level. Uh, too many missed tackles, uh, made some mental errors. I will say this, though, Missouri was a very difficult first game preparation uh, in terms of a lot of things that they did, motions, fastballs. Uh, so, you know, a tough first game for, for guys. Um, and, you know, recognition uh, probably is one of the things that uh, I think inexperienced players struggle with most. and. Uh, hopefully these guys will make a big improvement from last week to this week. But I was encouraged by their performance, you know, in the first game. Um, I mean, the big play throwback to the running back, you know, was not really a secondary issue. And, you know, that was the biggest play in the game. I didn't feel like we finished the game very well in two minutes at the end of the game. But um, for the most part, uh, I thought they played hard. They executed, uh, covered halfway decent for them and didn't give up a lot of explosive plays. Okay, we've got time for two more. We'll start with James Ogletree. Yeah, Coach, I wanted to ask about your tight end position. You had a good rotation going there on Saturday against Missouri. Just wanted your thoughts about that position group as a whole. And do you anticipate continuing with that kind of a rotation, or would you like to narrow that down? And go? Uh, we like to play as many guys as we can at any position who can play winning football. Um, you know, I think we played four guys. Um, and, you know, Major Tennyson would have played probably before some of those guys, but he has been sick, not COVID sick, but just, you know, a little bit. Uh, he's got an intestinal problem that has really kept him off the field for a while, but he was doing extremely well before that. But I think all these guys are capable, and, um, you know, we wanted to see what some guys could do in the game. If we had finished the game better, we could have played a lot more guys. So, um, you know, we think we have three or four guys at that position and all can contribute in some way, so we have no problem playing all of them. Okay, we'll finish up with Jared Oliver. Hey, Coach. Uh, you sort of already answered this, but just uh, Najee said that you guys play pretty solid overall, but you guys needed to tune up some things. Um, what would you want to see from your team against the Texas A&M defense? Well, we're going to have to finish better, finish blocks, finish runs uh, because these guys are really athletic. They can get off and make plays. Um, we have to do a good job on third down uh, because these guys have a lot of different pressures uh, that they use. Um, so we need to execute you know, extremely well on third down. And like beating a dead horse, um, you know, I don't think we played very well in the second half. So we didn't play a complete game. Um, so obviously, that's really, really important. Um, I guess you could ask Oklahoma, you know, that question, because uh, I'm sure their coach is saying some of the same things that we said. Um, their players probably respond a little bit better because they have negative consequences. Our players, you know, it's the worst thing you can do is, you know, play poorly and win. And we played poorly in the second half. 
Um, and I don't think anybody's immune from that. Uh, I've told the players that, so I'm not talking about them behind their back. And it's really my, my responsibility. All right, I came home and felt really bad that I must have done a really, really bad job, not in getting the players ready to play the game, but maintaining their intensity throughout the game uh, and doing a good job at halftime to try to get them to come out and you know, maintain you know, the energy that they needed to maintain to be able to play for 60 minutes in the game, not thinking that, hey, looking at the scoreboard, we always say there's no scoreboard. So, I mean, that's something we need to improve on because when we play – a good team like Texas A&M, who's capable with a quarterback of coming back in the game, uh, you know, 28 to three or whatever the score was, game ain't over then. Not when there's two quarters left to play. All right, so um, that's that's the thing I was most disappointed in. So if I was most disappointed in, I think that's the thing we need to improve on the most.